First thing, the file name. Mikaya is the main character in the Fire Emblem Raiden Dawn, so shout outs to her. And we get started. The first thing we see is a new starting cutscene that will have some really nice uh, pictures coming up explaining the story. Essentially, the story is about uh, a country including the Dusk Side and the Dawn Side. One day, the Dusk Side gets controlled by a big beast. Uh, the beast starts being really mean and whatever. And the Priestess of Dawn from the Dawn Side decides to ban away the beast. And so that reinforces the separation that was already there between the Dusk Side and the Dawn Side. And the goal of the game will be to go and free the Dusk Side from uh, the influence of the Dark Beast. The game was made uh, as a proof of concept that uh, a, a, nin, a the 64DD uh, could be used to enhance Zelda Ocarina of Time. So that's just not... Man, I don't know what I'm saying here. That's why I'm practicing. It's okay. It's a 64DD mod from OT. The goal is to show that it can actually work on hardware, on that hardware, and that optimizations can be used for the game using 64DD. Uh, uh, the devs are Captain CDI and Luigi Blood. And now we enter Link's house. This will be, uh, well actually that's the inn, but it corresponds to Link's house in terms of save warping and we'll be using that to prevent uh, time losses from backtracking earlier, uh, I mean later. Uh, you can notice the, the logo on the shield is different. That's not the Deku shield we're used to, that's actually the, the wooden shield. Dude... Now here we're going to use uh, that Kako to help us make progress. And we throw it at a somehow specific angle so it goes away from us and climbs the stairs that we saw just earlier. This is Man on Roof. We get our first item from him, the heart piece, just as in original Ocarina of Time. And then we go meet our Kako who's exactly where we want it to be. And the rupees I grabbed earlier were for uh, another heart piece we're going to be collecting later. And we just jump here. Grab the money we need, and that's all the money requirements in the game. So this game casually is pretty short, it's about 3 hours when you don't know where to go. But when you do know where to go, uh, it's about half an hour. Might be different compared to Estimate. So next step, uh, we're going to get some extra items. That's essentially what you start to run with, uh, getting the basic equipment you'll need in the village for the rest of the run. So the slingshot will be useful to unlock some places, complete some puzzles. And now we're going to get a little surprise when we enter that house. Our dear friend Dampe is right here waiting for us to steal whatever is in that chest. Nicely enough, you start with the shield. We only need to pick up the sword to continue the game.
and then we just go out. And we just go into water. Usually someone gives you a hint to tell you to go and look into water for it, but we already know where it is. And so we just go and side hop into the water to get it. And for now, that's about it for Dong Grove Village. We'll come back later after having completed the first of two dungeons in the game. Technically three, but it's more of uh, a transition area than a dungeon, but we'll talk about that uh, when we get there. So we're in Dongrove, that's one of the main areas in the uh, in the Dawn side. Here we'll be getting another of our weapons, the Deku Stick. So I'll need two because I'm going to intentionally intentionally break one later in the run. You'll see why. Here, what's cool is that just a simple backflip should equip uh, should equip the well should lit up the stick and nicely enough that made us obtain another important chest for the game that should have been a backwalk whatever. And so here we, uh, we know, we already know the puzzles in here, so we go and light the torches uh, ahead of time. So that opened a gate, blocking a torch for another torch puzzle. Here we're gonna grab another item from that deck of scrap. More hard pieces. Here with a little shield turn, you can get a very nice back wall out of that area into the next one. So we can grab two other items up here. Nice. Oh, actually, uh, let's grab this. Let's grab this. Dude. And that's gonna give us our second bottle. I should say that later, actually. So yeah, this game was released in uh, September 2019. And uh, we already, since then, we already had, uh, we pretty quickly after got a, uh, Discord for it, where you can ask questions and discuss chats. And that's the power bracelet. Notice the different uh, sun-like design on it. So as you've already heard, uh, this game has uh, custom maps, custom music. Some are the same in the dungeon, first dungeon, we'll see. But ooh, most things are new in this game, except the item set. So that gives us another... Okay, we'll just go with that. Gives us another important item with who's... Which is strangely in a small chest. Yeah, so if ever you have more questions about this, there's a Dawn... Dawn and Dust speedrunning... Uh, gaming and speedrunning Discord, whether you want to play casually or run the game, uh, you're welcome to come and ask us whatever question you have. Ow. 
Next, uh, that's one of the first glitches in the run. We're gonna use flame storage to skip some uh, mini game, uh, some flame puzzle in here. Dude, oh, yeah. yeah, that happened. And we're gonna be coming back. So we through this uh, passageway here. So we're pushing the block for later in the run. And now that, that's the completion of flame storage. So flame storage, from what I understand. Works by interrupting the stick lighting up with a uh, first person item. And that makes it so the game kind of forgets to turn off the Deku stick or never has a chance to. And that makes it we can carry the flame stick for longer than unexpected. That's a little optimization here. You can jump with the bomb and get to the blue fire. Uh, you could do equip swaps here, or, or dupes over some item slots, but uh, it's just simpler to grab blue fire this way, as you can grab more later in the run. That's not a bad angle, actually. That's a very bad angle, actually. Oh, I forgot to split here. And now, a uh, Swag Strat. That's one of my favorite in this game. Here is a bit more bomb usage to get through walls. Bit of waiting time, but it's fine. You're important. You have to equip the shield very soon, otherwise it burns and that invalidates the 100% run. But that's why uh, when I my second split in this run is actually named uh, equip metal shield, so I re can remember to do it. Here you can go from the right, but it's a run killer in my opinion. So you go from the left, and it's much more consistent. However, it can take you to Crit Wiggle, which inputs a random direction, I think, up left in this game every 256 frames. So, that can be very annoying for those who played Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask. Since, yeah, I can do a jump perfectly with my joystick going perfectly straight up and uh, still go a bit to the left. But it's not too much of a problem, really, if you're careful. Here, I'm gonna... Equip the tunic. We have barely enough life. Well, actually, we have enough... Never mind, uh, we're getting heartbeats later, so... No worries about the health. A heart, a later heartbeats before entering the first dungeon will give us uh, all our life back, and that will also correspond to a new heart container. Also, uh, notice how I might have been a bit more careful on my way back from uh, the tunic, because if you get hit by the flames on your way to the tunic, it's not much of an issue. But if it happens on your way back, uh, the platform the platform you're from is higher. So if you get pushed away, you're getting pushed against a higher platform, and so you're not gonna land on it. You're just gonna avoid out, and uh, that's essentially run over in this case. 
because you respawn at the very start of the chasm. I need to make sure how to say that word. And uh, yeah, that's a big time loss. I think I've already PB'd the, the dad when I first started running, but uh, you don't want to... It's not a fun run to continue after. You'll be in the red. So here we can just adjust a bit to land on the switch right away. That gives us another chest. Now we're gonna need to do a pretty scary uh, jump attack here to skip some boulder puzzle. Oh my god, that was tight. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that's another run killer. It's, it's very easy to do, it's just you can't miss it. And here uh, we'll just be entering uh, the first dungeon very soon. And that's Red Ice Cavern, ba probably based off uh, LT's uh, usual ice cavern, but it's uh, much redder. Very nice design, very nice layout, everything's well placed. So here we got flame storage to go and skip a silver rupee. A puzzle that gives us a platform to go hit this thing. First try, I'm happy. So it's not too hard to do it uh, by yellowing it, but I need so I, I and it's a uh, and it would be a marathon, so I want to be careful. And so I'm good for Deku Stick count. And like I said earlier, this dungeon is really, uh, really wraps around nicely. Since every time you get a you get something, it brings you back where you need to be next. So there is not much backtracking. It's pretty efficient in that sense. We're gonna grab the extra blue fire we need. Oh, actually, that's not the good equip. Well, yeah, that would be it. And here there's the, there are these spikes, but you can just hang down there and wait, and it essentially skips the first big segment of that platform puzzle. There's a Beemos, but if you're on the platform, uh, I think at least on the first half of the platform, he's not gonna hit you. Oh, dude. Uh, and there's this target you get. Not sure you can skip this part with uh, just holding on the side. I should test that. I should test that. Okay. Really not perfect, but it's good practice. And uh, this run is pretty uh, mellow in the sense that uh, it doesn't have that many glitches, but it's just fun to go. It's my like it's it's my side game, and uh, it's really enjoyable at the end of the stream when you maybe don't have as much time, or when you're working at the same time as you're speedrunning. So, hope this makes you want to try it out. And since I jump slashed earlier, I stored a uh, damage of value 4, and that means I can one shot that 
uh, .po. And uh, here you have to be careful, because uh, he actually gives you information about the end of the dungeon. So, and it takes really long, so in runs, if it's really important not to talk to him. And again, right after getting the key, we're brought back to the main, uh, to the next step in the dungeon, so there's not much waiting time in figuring out where to go. Makes it a bit easy, but makes it very, uh, it flows really well. Here, what I'm trying to do is just roll into that ice, and then we just... Uh, get close enough to activate uh, the open option. Okay, so that was essentially the dungeon's uh, mini game. Well, no, the dungeon's mini boss. Pardon me. I have to practice there. <laughs> yeah, he dropped Deku seeds. You want to make sure not to grab those in the run. Because, uh, yeah, they, you have like a, you get lots of text boxes if you get it. There's the hammer. Wait, split. I should just skip that. And now that's the last blue fire we need for the run. Uh, there are only two bottles in the game, but uh, interestingly, uh, you can theoretically give yourself uh, 12 bottles in your inventory. So that's actually one category on our leaderboard. So if you want to be, uh, if you're looking uh, for a world record, that's something you could try. So 12 bottles in uh, Zelda 64 Dawn and Dust. And that was it for collection in the, the Chasm and in Red Ice Cavern. And now we save warp. I forgot an equip. <laughs> we save warp back to the inn to get what we were missing. Earlier there were a couple of hard pieces we need to get before entering the final dungeon. So this game, is, as I said, it's pretty short. It only has two dungeons. But it's well designed and uh, it's, for, in my opinion, it's, uh, it's length is part of the charm. Here there's that room that's presented as like, some secretive trolling door uh, if you try and access it without uh, the bracelet. Apparently, this room was made to have a lot of lag when the bomb uh, would explode, so that so to prevent hessing. Dude. happens and so we're almost done with the heart pieces we only have two to complete the current heart container and the last one comes from uh, the final boss uh, there's gim also in this game you can uh, you can gim fire arrows by doing some crazy setup in in the Grover Inn, actually. Thanks to uh, our numerous uh, Dutch hunters we have uh, in the community. Dude. Watch out here, you don't want to... You don't want to backwalk off this bridge, because uh, it's not going to let you grab, it's just going to throw you down. you got to be careful here. And now we're heading straight to the final boss. 
Uh, reason why we couldn't do it before was the hammer. But with the hammer, we'll be good to go. That was a bit slow. Three, four, five. Yeah, back walk is worth it. Okay, I'll take it. Was on the line of being a bit too late. Actually, never mind. That's it. So here, be very careful. So in the garden, you need to. Activate some switches, light up some torches. I think it's worth just getting caught here. Actually, if he's that close. Yeah, that's faster. Cool. Uh, good adaptation. Here, you have to be careful. Those guards are really hard. And they're around the torches, usually, so... Uh, you have to be careful, so that's why flame storage is an amazing glitch to have for this run. Because we get to make the guards uh, much more bearable than in glitchless categories. Because yes, this game also has a glitchless leaderboard for both any percent and 100%. I think he doesn't see me. We'll see. Okay, that's good. And, yeah. Activating those two switches made this middle room accessible. That will give us access to the fire. We need for this run. I didn't count the number of pushes, that's alright. Pretty sure that's fine. And, and notice this, the nice snow effect that was brought here. And the fountains here and there. Okay, cool. We're on a good cycle. For that guard. And the next one's not too bad. He's pretty generous. Yeah, you can just walk past him. Here, strangely, you're, you absolutely have to dive to get that hard piece. You can't just jump in the water. And that was our last uh, hard piece based container. And then the rest I'll just do casually. Unless. Dude. I'm on a bad cycle. Let him walk a bit. Okay, cool. That was kind of fast, actually. I'm happy. And so that unlocked... Uh, a gate to uh, the boss key. Which, interestingly, is in a purple chest. Miss this. Let's hope I get it on the way back. It should be doable. And... Depending on the guard's position of... We should be able to... Grab some more fire. Right from the last torch here. Yeah, that's perfect. That's one safe use of uh, side hops here. You can optimize in other places, but uh, uh, but it's not always that useful. So rolls usually do it, or some back walks. And uh, you may recognize this room for, from Zelda: Ocarina of Time. 
that used to be Volvage's room, but it was uh, changed to that nice purple theme, violet theme. And same thing for Volvagia, who is now Umbrasia in this one hack. And so to beat it, we'll need four jump attacks from the hammer, while well, on the actual damage of all Volvagia, and then that'll be the end of the run after getting the heart container. Okay, three hits here. As you saw, there was a fairy right there. So pretty useful in any percent, but in but you can tank a hit in Hondo, so if I get hit, then I might go and get one, but that shouldn't happen. Okay, use Power Crouch Tap here, because uh, if you don't have enough room to like backflip and jump again, uh, yeah, you don't want to throw yourself down there, especially if you're like on any other side than the one I'm in for the arena, for the arena, because the this is the only side that has uh, this fencing. Uh, what's the name for that? That has climbable. It has a climbable surface. Oh, that sounds cool. That's good. It has climbable surface. Well, that gives an extra challenge to this fight. Oh wow, that's true. It might actually. Yeah, so three out of four. Yeah, this this should PB. Oh wow. I didn't think that was gonna PB, but my PB was super bad. Like I got 32 something with uh what was it? Uh with the burned wooden shield. So yeah. Oh wow, did I just kill PB? Oh my god, it's so bad. I just killed PB, congrats! Unless he comes back right away. Oh uh, no, 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 these take forever. I just killed PB. That's epic. Come on. Okay, he's back quickly. That was a free hit and I didn't take it, that's what happens. Yeah, we just passed my, I think we passed my... Okay. Okay, this PB. This PB. Oh, I don't remember the time for the cutscene. And yet, uh, other things in my notes. Kind of talked about everything, but I feel like I could talk about more. Okay, yeah, that's that's a minute PB. That's pretty cool. Nice! Wow, PB on a commentary practice. So I'll re listen to this tomorrow and see what I can improve, adjust where there was low time, where I forgot to talk about stuff, but that's okay. It's not, it's not what I want, but with practice, I should have a good submission for like uh, probably Friday. I'll should have a better submission. I might practice again now, I don't know, I'm thinking. So yeah, thank you to uh, all anyone who helped in the game, as you can see in the credits. I should talk, yeah, I really should talk about Halion modding earlier. Alright. Mm, so, that was it for my commentary practice that happened to be a PB, so we'll take it. Uh... Goodbye to those watching PB, and I uh, might continue streaming, we'll see.